Hi, Wei Wei. This is Gian in Toronto. Hello. Hello. This thank, is Hi Wei Wei. Thank you so much for doing this. Well, you're welcome. Wei Wei, it's good to speak to you again. The last time we spoke, your your movements were restricted. You were still apparently under some kind of investigation by Chinese authorities. What is your situation now? Now they kind of leave me alone, but uh, they never uh, return my passport to me, and uh, they try not to talk to me. Even I make a phone call or or they they never answer my phone call. Do, do you still have to pretty much stay at home, or are you free to travel within within Beijing? I I I've. I can travel outside Beijing now, but uh, of course, there's always secret police following in the airport or in the hotel. When when we talked last last year, you described feeling angry and frustrated about your situation. You said things felt very dark. Do you still feel that way? I think uh, as toward myself uh, personally, it's getting uh, more freedom. Um, but the whole situation in China is uh, still very messy and very confused. And 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 how would you describe your daily life? What's a daily uh, a day like for you now? Uh, well, uh, every morning I wake up about seven. Six or seven o'clock, I would uh, immediately get on internet, which I cannot uh, use uh, China domestic internet, so I have to uh, so-called to climb over the Great Firewall and uh, get on Twitter, so I can see news or to talk to Twitter uh, fans to discuss uh, current situation. Then by nine o'clock, uh, my colleague would come. We would discuss about art shows, or publication, or documentary films. You know, we were trying to make um, for many many years. And uh, in the afternoon, I would uh, to I would go to park with my son and uh, spend time with uh, him. By the evening, I, I, I would come back to the office and uh, get on internet again. That's my everyday schedule. In order to express yourself, you need a reason, and and the reason is to express yourself. Yes, <laughs> uh, it, it become more true after I write that. That was. Uh, 2005, I was still very frustrated about uh, uh, how to use the new technology, uh, internet, to integrate as uh, important uh, tool for artistic expression, and also the kind involvement bring me into more social uh, concerns. Well, I'm very, I'm very happy to, pleased to hear that that you're you're okay. You're speaking to us. You spoke to us at at some risk last year. Let's talk. Jump into talking about your artwork. It it seems like despite the challenges of your situation, you're still very active creatively. You you made quite a stir with your show at the Venice Biennale this year. The series of dioramas you made depicting scenes from the 81 days you spent in a Chinese prison in 2011. Uh, wait, wait. What what were you trying to express about your experience? in prison with that work? Um, after I was released, so many people have a curiosity about my condition during that, uh, that uh, kind of uh, detention. And uh, it's very hard to explain. So I looked through in the history, in Chi Chi China's history, very a few accountable um, images or writings about uh, the details of, of the condition. So I also it's very difficult for me to explain that uh, kind of experience. As an artist, I automatically think to to make a, a 
a, a sculpture to 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 really um, trying to make as uh, precise as possible to, uh, for the memory and for people um, who has curiosity to to see the condition I think that's uh, that's worth to try but it's very difficult because the the condition of my release is uh, clearly states I can never tell anybody about uh, the secret dis detention mm. and uh, and also to make a large sculpture like that it takes uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, carefulness we have to do it secretly and uh, but uh, after um, almost two years of struggle we we, we made of uh, made this happen how much is is creating that kind of artwork about explaining what you went through as you've just explained and how much of it is about coping with the memories that may haunt you as some some sort of um, therapeutic or cathartic kind of release I think it works on both ways first you have to uh, precisely and uh, to to examine the condition uh, or to memorize to record all the details and uh, which I spent 81 days uh, just uh, trying to remember and measure everything. And uh, also, it takes a long time for anybody has been uh, mistreated or, or has been put in a very difficult situation through a state judicial system and uh, to really overcome and to have this kind of therapy to to readjust their their understanding and their view about the world and uh, which is very difficult i see many many people uh, after their release they can never really come back to normal life again uh, because this is just too dramatic uh, experience which has nothing related to uh, ordinary life or, or common sense or, or logical or judgment or our sense of right or wrong. And you, do so you have any, do you have any sense of a normal life now? I have a, I'm much better. I, I, it take me already two, over two years uh, to hang in the park, to to see the nature and to find, you know, those uh, insects in the grass with my son and uh, trying to enjoy all those uh, uh, moments and, uh, to, you know, it, it's a hard, hard job. Do you, do you still feel haunted by moments of that 81 days in, in, in prison? Not as much when I was uh, just uh, released. I would always have nightmares. I become uh, more easy to get uh, tempered or angry. And uh, I w now I become uh, a bit better. Well, I guess I, I don't want to say it's a benefit, but one of the upshots is that you create very powerful artwork and uh, out of s situations like this. And, and some of that powerful artwork is now on display in Canada. Wei Wei, this retrospective, according to what, marks the first time North American audiences have had a chance to see a large collection of your work in a single show. It's, a, it's also a significant honor in, in the art world. What does getting this kind of recognition in North America mean to you? I think as an artist, this is uh, very uh, grateful uh, to to see uh, your work has been well received by the audience, and uh, I am very uh, happy to know my work uh, now receive a, a great enthusiastic uh, from the Canadian uh, audience and. Uh, I have to say thanks to them and uh, also uh, thanks to the uh, the museum, the organizer and uh, you know director. Uh, they, they have the courage and uh, made those effort. What do you mean by they have the courage? 
well, we we all see uh, in the Western uh, yeah, world or or uh, Europe or United States, and um, they have a, a more um, relationship with the Chinese government today than ever, uh, because the economy, because of the the business. Yes. I I think uh, many culture uh, exchanges has been shattered by uh, those uh, you know, those essential struggles and uh, many in many areas people I tend not to mention to the supporting for the those very basic values such as human rights freedom of, freedom of speech. So I think uh, every effort made uh, uh, towards that direction, I think it's uh, uh, it's um, it's very valuable. Are you suggesting that in some way, way, way that that just presenting your artwork, the exhibition, is a political act of sorts? I wouldn't say it's a political act, but uh, I would say uh, certainly it. Uh, uh, it does uh, have a support for uh, for the justice anywhere is to support uh, you know the, the justice and uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, I think that's uh, from Martin Luther King's uh, uh, original thinking, and uh, I think uh, human today uh, are so connected and uh, all those values are shared. Uh, more than ever, so you know this is a, a, a total struggle. It's interesting to have this exhibition, which is it's quite stunning, and it's it's interesting to have it in North America because, in a way, it's a return to a different home of yours. Uh, and I want to ask you about some of the work that's included in this retrospective, uh, called "According to What." There are some photographs. Uh, speaking of a second home of yours, from the time you spent in New York City in the 1980s. Wei Wei, how important was that time in your life in developing your art and philosophy? Uh, the time I spent in New York is, uh, I think it's very important in my life. Uh, that was the time I just uh, uh, survived with my family through the Cultural Revolution. And uh, that time, China is like Northern Korea today. So I managed to escape and uh, to spend uh, 12 years in quite um, a free uh, style, you know, to stay and uh, to survive in this um, capital uh, of the, uh, uh, you know, one of the capitals of Western culture. And uh, certainly, uh, you know the the kind of values or or or, or a kind of uh, struggle or argument, and uh, all those around uh, related to culture politics uh, affect my 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 view. I think I'm very much influenced uh, by this uh, period of experience. Of course, you return to China, and a lot of your work reflects on China. And this show, this exhibition, according to what, includes some of your best-known works, including, on the one hand, a series of photos of you smashing Han Dynasty vases. On the other, for example, large sculptures that use traditional Chinese woodworking techniques. Do you see your work as breaking with Chinese tradition or continuing it? I think my work uh, are using uh, Chinese culture, sometimes the polit political situation or current uh, conditions as a ready-made, um, which uh, gave me a chance to rethink my position and uh, to, to make some kind of uh, uh, announcement or, or, or some kind of new expression out of it and uh, which dealings uh, where we come from and how uh, what kind of frustration we have today
And this show also includes photos from your series, Study in Perspective. Uh, these are quite provocative. These photos show a close-up of your middle finger in the foreground, effectively you know, giving the finger to famous institutions and scenes of power like the White House, the Eiffel Tower, Tiananmen Square. Wait, wait, how do you sum up the message of that series? Do you mean it as a rejection of all authority, all icons? No, I wouldn't say that, you know, we all have to live uh, under some kind of order or, or, or some kind of system. And, uh, but uh, nevertheless, the personal uh, intention or the attitude towards the power, such as political and, uh, and uh, economical or cultural uh, uh, power structures, which uh, you know, it shows my my at least shows my concerns or my attention. You know, I I have to uh, you know as an individual, um, especially as an artist, as an individual, um, I always have to think uh, my positions and and to make a judgment and to to question the authority. And uh, at the same time, of course, we we questioning our our life or our existence. You know, we are we we always part of this kind of argument. It's interesting because it's a, it's an angry gesture to give something the finger. You know, the White House. But in a way, it also strikes me as, as quite impotent. I mean, it it doesn't it, it, it's 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 sort of passive in the sense that it's not going to actually change anything. Can you reflect on that? I think that shows an individual position toward any authority. As an individual, uh, of course, uh, you know, it's not always just angry, but sometimes it's just. Uh, uh, a humor or, or a joke or right. or or to dismiss a certain kind of tension by doing that I think uh, um, you know it's only a gesture it's nothing so important it's just like anybody would take a, a photo in front of a, a building to to use as a memory <laughs> right I got you <laughs> but just with the middle finger raised um, th this yeah, it's just, um, you know, it's only my left hand. It's you know, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I w wouldn't take my head. I think uh, that's boring. But my left hand is more tolerable. <laughs> well, perhaps uh, certainly in a more serious vein, this show also includes the field of rebar you salvaged from buildings destroyed in the Sichuan air earthquake in in two thousand and eight, and a wall inscribed with the names of more than five thousand children who died. Wait, but you have to explain this to, to audiences in North America. You took it upon yourself to research the names of the dead and memorialize them in art. This would seem like a, a compassionate and a beautiful gesture. This was one of the things that got you into trouble with Chinese authorities. Why was this such a threat to them? At first, we are living in a society, the government is trying to cover up any information. And uh, all the information has been either uh, distorted or, or, or to even withdrawn by the government, uh, such as uh, victims of the uh, so-called natural di disaster. But we all know in 2008, when the earthquake happened, all the school building collapsed, and the building next to it doesn't even collapse. So that means uh, the school are built, uh, we call it, uh, an, you know, uh, tofu uh, <laughs> construction. And uh, by asking those names to recognize those life and memorize it, you know, to, to asking for their name and birthday, uh, I want to bring up a social conscious about uh, how to respect a life, how to, how to memorize those lost. And so, sorry, these are changes passing by. That's okay, no problem. And, uh, 
and uh, because I was very active in the internet then, I still can use uh, domestic internet by then. So I, I said, uh, you know, as a, as a citizen, you cannot always blame the government, and you can really take action. Just you know, as a one person, I think we can research and to go to the location, talk to the parents to find out who is missing in the earthquake. And uh, I got a lot of support from the uh, netizens. And so we organized the volunteers to go to the location, and uh, which is very difficult. Our team has been arrested over 40 times. And uh, then still we managed to find 5,000 names. It's kind of like a miracle. And I post all those names on the internet, which it's it become a symbolic uh, gesture to to question as, as the, the authority or put them on trial to see how incapable or to see how morally they are uh, they are wrong or they are so corrupted in, yes. in many ways. So that really made them very angry, which caused you know some kind of they 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 use uh, even physical violence cause my uh, brain surgery yes. and, uh, and later that's one of the reasons they try to to calm me down to put me you know secretly uh, detained me but in, the, in 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 the course of that way way you've become arguably the most prominent critic of the chinese regime certainly within china do you think more Chinese artists and intellectuals should be speaking out the way you do? I think uh, people should speak out about their own rights, and that's the rights come with them, and, uh, it, uh, and it's going to help everybody else. So, intellectual or not, this is a very essential way to live through. And, uh, but uh, in the reality, there's very few people um, even dare to, 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 to act up or to really show their, uh, uh, what's in their mind. Well, they won't even... Uh, yeah, they, because uh, the government can arrest people only because you put one sentence on the internet. Or, or one question or one, one mark which they think is threatened to their authority. You know, they, they, they won't even uh, allow your name to be mentioned, as I understand, Weiwei. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you a story, which is that the, the martial arts movie star, Jackie Chan, was recently on my show. He was sitting here in studio with me, and we were having a good interview, a good conversation. Uh -huh. I mentioned you, and he claimed to not even know your name. Does that surprise you? Uh, that not surprise me. He, uh, it's obviously he's still um, playing in, in your show. I, he knows me very well. He's a very much uh, pro garment uh, uh, actor, and he his uh, acting are so extremely. Um, Towards the, the us, you know, to 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 on the side of authority, which already become a laughable, uh, in uh, humorous uh, uh, actor in in, mm. in the in the public view, and uh, you know. I I I asked him a few times. You are you sure you don't know Ai Weiwei? He said, "I've never heard that name. I don't know who that is." Does it bother you when you hear that? Well, it bothers me when people like him, which is very influential, not to admit the truth and not to uh, still scared of the authority. That really bothers me because he, he you know, he's quite well known and uh, he doesn't have to uh, be like that. Do you ever worry your role as an activist is overshadowing your work as an artist, that you become known more for as an activist and, and that people will bypass the art along the way? I think uh, I love art, I love poetry, and uh, I love to act uh, in, in, 
in helping myself and other people. And uh, I wouldn't be so sorry if they don't call me an artist. And uh, as long as I still uh, have ability to, to fight for justice. You've paid a great personal price for your activism. You've been detained, you've been in prison, you, you had that surgery in, in your head after you were hit. Uh, there are other critics of the regime, like the Nobel Prize, uh, Peace Prize winner Liu Xiaobao, for instance, who have, have been imprisoned for years. Why do you think the regime has allowed you to continue your work even with these restrictions? Every time when people ask me the same question, I, I don't really know. I think, uh, you know, I'm a, a very lawful person. And uh, all what I did is my opinion, and uh, and that's a duty for artists to express his uh, true feelings. So if I have to uh, pay some kind of price, you know, I'm ready for it. And I think the authority knows, uh, you know, I'm, uh, it's very hard to deal in situation like this. Meaning that, I mean, but why don't they just, I, I don't want them to do this, but why don't they just imprison you and take you away like they would with Liu Xiaobao? I think, uh, I think even uh, the authority, they are not just one person, they are still a system. If they have to do this to me, they have to do this to millions of, of the people. You know, when I was arrested, uh, which is uh, like, a, like kind of earthquake for most people, it shaked a lot of people's view, and many of them, because of that they escaped, they they trying to immigrate uh, yeah, to the West because they they lost this kind of trust. Mm -hmm. So for any kind of authority, even authority like uh, China, can be quite uh, uh, brutal sometimes, but still. They, they don't want to be appeared uh, to be like uh, they're, they're irrational or so, you know, I cannot speak for them, but uh, I hope they, they be more rational. Wait, wait, you do pay a price for this. What, what if you never get your passport back and this is how you have to live for the rest of your life? Would you say it has been worth it? I think it's worth it, and uh, you know I will never uh, trade uh, my freedom with any kind of other kind of leisure or or, or or property. And the freedom is in my mind. And uh, as a human, I struggle and made my effort. And uh, I I would uh, take for any kind of consequence. If I don't willing to take the consequence, I I think that kind of freedom is too cheap for me. And uh, I still remember when my father was exiled, uh, we are in much difficult situation and my father would never know this cultural revolution would end. He ta tells us, you know, he, when he cleans the toilet, he said, I don't know who cleaned my toilet for the past 60 years. And uh, why don't we just think we were born here? And, uh, mm. you know, we, and our, our whole family supported him. I think that's more naturalistic uh, reaction and uh, I, I mean realistic reaction. Mm. Before I let you go, I, I'll ask you uh, one more question. Uh, uh, wait, wait. The last time we spoke, you said you believed that China could become a more open society, but only if people would fight for it. Now you started this conversation uh, today, saying that um, you feel like you personally have a bit more freedom, but you're still concerned for the country. Are you more hopeful or less hopeful than you were a year and a half ago for the future of China? Uh, for future of China, I'm very hopeful. China have to survive and have to make a, a, their own. A uh, true struggle, uh, and for myself, the situation now I don't really know because there's so many people get arrested uh, in recent days. It's uh, it's it's always an honor to get to speak to you. I I thank you for making the time and for taking so much time with us tonight. Thank you, Ai Weiwei. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.